So I want to preach on what is sin. <clears throat> you can ask a lot of people what is sin, and you'll get a lot of different answers. And uh, somebody might look at something and say, well, that's not a sin. And somebody else say, well, that is a sin. I've had a, a so Christian tell me that lying is not a sin. Okay, that, how, do you, how, do you, why do you, how do you determine what's a sin? Their, their determination that lying is not a sin is based on what? What would it be based on? Their, their views, what they think. Is that the way we're supposed to, to, to judge things? Am I, am I supposed to judge what's right and wrong according to what I think to my own standard? Well, every one of us here have a different standard, right? So there would be no agreement whatsoever. Uh, <clears throat> And then we have the influence of Satan. Satan wants people to sin. And he wants people to, 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 to believe wrong things. So uh, actually the Bible says in, in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to su seducing spirit and doctrines of devils. The devil has his own doctrine as well. You know what the doctrine of the devil is? Nothing sin. Do what you want. If you like it, do it. That's what the, the devil teaches. And that's what a lot of Christians believe. If I feel like it, it's okay. But that's not what God says. Uh, the Bible tells us in, a, again, uh, for the time will come where they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. So we have a problem. People are doing what they think is right. But the thief thinks it's okay that I steal. Does that make stealing right? Well, I, I have to disagree with you. I don't, I don't think stealing is right. I, you may think stealing is right, but I don't think it's right. And I, I have a reason. I have an authority. The authority is God. So you may feel something is okay, but what does God say? You see, everyone thinks they're right. Do you ever get in an argument with somebody? Who's ever been in an argument with somebody? Who's ever been in an argument with somebody when, when, when they were, they were, the other person was right? Yeah. But usually you think, who do you think's right when you're in the argument? Me. I think I'm right. That's our nature. The Bible says, all the ways of man are clean in his own eyes. What we do, we think, is okay. But it's clean in, did anybody catch it? In whose eyes? Your own eyes. But it doesn't end there. But the Lord weigheth the spirits. Again, Proverbs uh, 21, 2. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the heart. We very seldom think we're wrong because we decide things from how we look at it. And uh, our, our, there's a book of the Bible um, that shows what happens if everybody does what they think is right. Does anybody know what that book is? Go ahead and say it louder. Judges. In the book of Judges, you read Judges and you think, why in the world did God put that book in the Bible? There's so many horrible things happening. But it's a history book. But in Judges chapter 17, verse 6, in those days there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which is right in his own eyes. And again, Judges 21, 25, in those days there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which is right in his own eyes eyes and so you read the book of judges and you see all these terrible things happening and you, you wonder why god has put it in the word of god and, and and one of the reasons god has put it in there is to show us what happens when people do things that that are right in their own eyes we can always find reason to justify what we've done i mean i can sadly say that i have justified things that i've done that have been wrong so this morning I want us to look at what sin is. I'm not going to give you a list of sins and say, this is a sin, this is a sin, this is a sin, this is a sin. What I'm going to say is, what does God 
say is sin. How does God define sin? Now, first of all, there's a lot of ver- words in the Bible that describe sin. So let's look at a few. Let's look at Psalm 36. Psalm 36. Excuse, I don't know why my water bottle is so squeaky this morning. Psalm 36, verse 1. I want you to listen and read along. You read along as I read it out loud. And then I'm going to ask you, what is the word there for sin? Psalm 36, verse 1. The transgression of the wicked saith within my heart, there is no fear of God before his eyes. What is the word for sin there? Transgression. Transgression is to break God's law. So, sin is breaking God's law. Let's look at another one. Psalm 25. And verse 11. For thy name's sake, O Lord... Pardon mine iniquity, for it is great. What's the word there? Iniquity. And we know it's sin because he needs to have his iniquity. What does he need it to have? It pardoned, forgiven. So iniquity is moral depravity. Then let's look at Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. And verse 25. Talking about Jesus Christ. I'm going to read verse 24 just to give the context. But for us also to whom it shall be imputed. If we believe on him that raised up Jesus Christ our Lord from the dead. Talk about Jesus Christ being raised from the dead. Who was delivered for our offenses. Who being Jesus Christ. Was delivered for our offenses. And was raised again for our justification. What's the word there for sin? Offenses. Offenses means to offend. Offend who? God. So sin is offending God. Look at Acts chapter 8. And verse 22. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness, and pray God if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. What's the word for sin there? Wickedness. So sin is wickedness. Uh, Wickedness is evil dispositions or practices. Doing evil is wickedness. And let's look at one last verse. Proverbs 11, verse 3. The integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of the transgressors shall destroy them. Uh, What's the word? There's two words there, but the new word. Perverseness. That which is directed away from that which is right. To, per, to perverse. perverse, And so uh, we have a lot of different words in the Bible, and I didn't even cover them all, that, that talk about sin. Some people might say, well, uh, God doesn't call this a sin. Yeah, but he might call it wickedness, or he might call it perverseness, or he might call it uh, iniquity, or he might call it an offense. Now, we're going to look at the first mention of the word sin in the Bible. So we know when the first sin is, right? But where, where, where is sin first mentioned in the Bible? Anybody? Take a guess. Genesis. Yeah, well, you know, that's good. I meant the... <laughs> I, I should have been more specific. The first instance. No. no. Yeah, that, that would be the obvious thing, but it, God doesn't use the word sin there. Yeah. Before that, Cain and Abel. 
Cain and Abel. Genesis chapter 4. Let's look at this. Obviously, Adam's sin, and, and God calls what he sin, but it doesn't, in Genesis chapter 3, the word sin is not used. But in Genesis chapter 4, and I'm going to read verses 3 to 7. And in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought forth of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstling of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, And why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, thou sh shalt thou not be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Now this is a very strange thing. God called Cain's offering sin. That is strange. Cain gave the very best he had to God, and God called it sin. Now, humanly speaking, that seems really strange, but we have to look at it from a different point of view. What point of view do we have to look at it from? God's point of view. And so this is very important. First of all, God said he had no respect unto it. And then in 1 John 3, verse 12, it, uh, it says, Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. Wherefore slew he him, because his own works were evil, and her brothers righteous. It says, Cain, who was of that wicked one. Cain did something in his offering, and he, he, his offering was based on not what God wanted, but what Satan wanted. And that's, again, very strange. And God calls it evil. So, why in the world would God call Cain's offering sin? Well, it comes down to this. Jesus said, search the scriptures, for in them the, search the scriptures. I should have written a verse down. In them, you think, but anyways, you can skip a few bits, and he says, they are they which testify of me. The scriptures testify of Jesus Christ. And he said, Moses wrote of me. So, all through the Bible, you have pictures of Jesus Christ. For example, uh, we have the Passover. God was going to take the children of Israel out of Egypt. And they had to, at the last, uh, uh, what was the last uh, um, judgment on Egypt? Or, 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 or uh, uh, words gone from me. Not judgment, but uh, plague. What was the last one? Death of the firstborn. Death of the firstborn. And so, to... to, to uh, not have the firstborn, you had to take a lamb and you had to kill it. And it's interesting, it says you had to smite the side of your door and the top of your door. Now, all that pictured something. What did that picture? The cross. The cross. When, when John saw Jesus, what did he say? Behold the yeah. Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. So that lamb that they were slaying and smiting, Jesus was smitten for our sins, pictured the cross of Jesus Christ. And throughout the Bible, we have that. We have another example. Uh, Abraham. Abraham was going to, told to, to kill his, his, his son, his only begotten son. God never intended Abraham to kill him. God intended Abraham to be willing. But, so Abraham goes with Isaac, and what did Isaac carry? Does anybody know what he carried? He carried the wood, picturing Jesus carrying the cross. And, and, and he, do you know, we think of Isaac as a young boy like that. He wasn't. He, he was a young man, and he went willingly on the. Uh, to, he was going to willingly uh, to to die. You know, his father was an old man. His father didn't 
overpower him. Isaac went willingly. And that picture, Jesus Christ dying for us. And through, throughout the whole Bible, we have pictures of Jesus Christ. And so, we're in Genesis. Let's, let's go back to Genesis chapter 3. We know the first sin that happened was Adam and Eve. And what did God do? He killed a lambs, more than likely, and made skin and clothed them. Verse, chapter 3, verse 21. And Adam also and to his wife did the Lord make coats of skin, skins and clothed them. This is the first picture of Jesus Christ. And Job said, I know my Redeemer liveth. He says, he, he knows. And so throughout the whole Bible, we have a picture in the Old Testament of Jesus being our Redeemer. And that picture went was going to be the whole way through. But, the devil says, you get to heaven by your good works. You work to get to heaven. God says, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So, Cain brought the best he could do. Who is Cain trusting in? Himself. He was supposed to trust in the picture of the coming Messiah. And it was, that was promised way back in Genesis, the, the, uh, uh, before this even, uh, the seed of the woman that was going to bruise the serpent. So, the reason why it was wrong is, is it was influenced by Satan to say, you do your best, Cain, and you'll be all right. Doing your best is not all right because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So Cain sinned because he did not do what God said. He was interested in looking righteous rather than being righteous. He was religious. He made an offering. But he had been taught, obviously, by his parents what God expected. But he said, I don't care. I'm going to do it my way. And God said, Cain, your offering is sin. That's not so, so shocking anymore now when we see Cain's way was against God's way. And God says, you go your way, and I'm going to call it, what does he call it? Three-letter word. Sin. Sin. And so, uh, this is why uh, Cain's offering was rejected. So, basically, you could say this. Sin is disobeying God. God's way. Uh, Saul said uh, uh, to Samuel, I have sinned for I have transgressed the commandments, the commandment of the Lord. And that's what sin is. Sin is, is breaking God's commandment. Look at 1 John. That's right near the end of your Bible. 1 John chapter 3. Verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is breaking God's law. God had told and made Cain. Cain understood what God expected, and, and Cain said, No, I'm going to do it. What? Let's say it. My way. So sin, Cain broke. God's law. He could have uh, done it God's way, but he said, no, it's my way. So, it's breaking God's law. It, 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 it's not living up to God's standard. Uh, Garrett, if you didn't pass all your exams, would you have got your degree? Would it have been fair that they said, no, you don't get your degree? 
Yeah. So Gareth says, if I didn't do what was expected of me, I should not expect to get my degree. Right? I think that's fair. Everybody agree? Well, if it's fair for UCC to do that, is it not fair for God? God expects us to live up his standard. Now, the problem is we don't. But the, God, I'll, I'll talk about that in a, in a second, but God has an answer. But look at uh, Romans chapter 3. And verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Do you know what? Everybody has failed to meet God's standard. So none of us get our, our degree from UCC. No, uh, none of us deserve heaven. But God's got an answer. Sorry? I missed. Uh, did I say something? Oh. 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 <laughs> now I get it. <laughs> Well, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You see, sometimes if it, 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 sometimes my wife is trying to t I, tell me I said something wrong and I can't figure out what I... So I thought I had said something wrong. But now I get it. Uh, my computer is a little bit slower than everybody else's. But if we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God, but God's got the answer. And it's what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. Jesus paid it for us. So, sin is coming short of God's standard. Another thing, th here's, a, here's a verse. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Did you ever think of that? God says, if you know you're supposed to do something good and you don't do it, it is sin. I know I'm supposed to read my Bible. If I don't read my Bible, for me, what is it? It's sin because I know I'm supposed to do it. I know that I'm, I'm supposed to be nice to my wife. If I'm not nice to my wife, I'm sinning. I, I, I know that I, I'm to be praying. So if I don't pray, what is it? Sin. And so this makes things a little bit different. It's not just not doing bad things. Sin is actually when I know I'm supposed to be doing something good and I'm not doing it. Husbands not loving your wives. Wives not reverencing your husbands. Children not obeying your parent. So God sums it up in our text verse. All and righteousness is sin. So there's a sin, but God's got the answer. Let's go to John chapter 3. Jesus was talking to a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. And he told Nicodemus, you've got to be born again, Nicodemus. Well, Nicodemus, he was a ruler of the Jews, but he hadn't got a clue. He says, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? He says, what is it? What is it? Some sort of second physical birth? And Jesus explained you need two births. He said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And in that, there's a capital S, it's the Holy Spirit. And then he said, marvel not that I said unto you, ye must be born again. So, what is being born again? Well, it's where you come to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior and believe that he died for your sins. So, as we've gone through what sin is, hopefully you've come to this conclusion. I have sinned. But when you sin, you sin against who? God. Every sin that you ever committed has offended God. But God loves you anyways. Isn't that a wonderful thought? God loves me. You know, people say, I love you, but do they really? We don't know. God has proved it. So let's look at John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. 
He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. God knew you and knew me. And when Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary, he died for my sin. And he died for your sin. He died in your place. He died as my substitute. You see, there's nothing I can do to pay for my sin. If I come in your house and I steal from you, but then I give everybody in the church 20 euros, does that undo me stealing from you? Can I ever undo my sin? There's nothing, I, there's nothing to, that I can do to undo my sin. And people try. You know, I, I was brought up to believe, you know, you live a good life and that will help you pay for your sins and hopefully you live good enough, you eventually maybe get to heaven. That's exactly what Cain was doing, trying to do it whose way? His way. God loves you. There's nothing that you can do to pay for your sin. Jesus paid it all because he is God the Son. He's the eternal Son of God that left heaven, lived a perfect sinless life, and when he died, he died for your sin. But what do I have to do? Well, you have to have a change of heart. You need to see your sin as offending God. You can't ask for forgiveness of sin unless you really mean it. You know, uh, I don't know if somebody's ever done you something wrong and, and then with half a heart said sorry. Did anybody ever really do that, that to you? Nobody did. Oh, yeah. How did you feel? It wasn't very nice, was it? What's that? I'm sorry, I can't. It's not, there's no point to it. That's it exactly. They don't mean it. What, what you need to do is come from your heart and tell God, I'm sorry for my sin and I'm trusting Jesus Christ as my personal Savior because He paid for my sin. The thing about sin is you can't do anything to undo it. There's so many things I wish I could have undone. Words I said, deeds I did, I can't. The only thing that can pay for my sin is Jesus Christ. That's why he died on the cross of Calvary. To shed his blood for my sin. As we've looked at sin, it's all around us. And everyone has sinned. But you know what? You can have it forgiven. And when I was 17 years old, my brother told me about this. And I said, well, how can I have my sins forgiven then? He said, simple. Just ask. And so, at 17 years old, I put my trust in Jesus Christ and I asked for forgiveness and he saved my soul. Let me ask you a question. I won't embarrass you, but it's a question that I'm asking you, but I don't want you to answer out loud. Have you ever trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? If you died today, do you know where you're going to go? God tells you you can. All you do, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Christian, I want to talk about you for a moment. When you get saved, all your sins are forgiven, but you still sin. So how does this work? Well, it's like this. You need to confess your sin so that you can walk in fellowship with God. If, uh, if I'm unkind to my wife, I need to apologize to her so that we can be renewed uh, uh, fellowship, right? If I'm unkind to her, I'm, I'm still married, right? But the, the relationship's not right. So when, maybe, maybe there's some sin in your life that you need to ask God to forgive you to get that right so you can have fellowship. So if you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, I'm going to close in a word of prayer. But I want to show you from the Bible, and I'd be glad to take you through the Bible and show you for how you can know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, how you can have your sins forgiven. So just say to me, and, and we'll, we'll arrange a time, and I'll show you. If you're saved here this morning, would you get things right with God? Maybe there's sin in your life that you need to confess, and He'll forgive you. Let's close in a word of prayer.